question I'm getting more and more of, which I don't really feel qualified to answer, but I do have some experience with, is Yammy, I see you doing all that fun stuff at the track with motorcycles. I want to do it too. Where do I start? And to that I say, welcome. Welcome to the addiction that is riding a motorcycle on a closed circuit as fast as you want. To those of you who are uninitiated, a track day is simply when an organization such as Ride Smart here in Texas or N2 out in Georgia, where I did my last day, organizes an event for people to come out to a racetrack with their motorcycles, rip some laps, and go home safely. It's pretty simple. However, if you've never done it before, it can be pretty intimidating. You might see guys with specially prepared motorcycles, advanced equipment, generators, tents, and everything else under the sun. Today I'll walk you through a few few things you might want to think about when you're considering riding your bike at the track, it's honestly not as complicated as you might think. But before we begin, I know many of you don't even have motorcycles yet, and that makes me sad. So I have a motorcycle giveaway going on right now. I've got a brand new Yamaha R3 and Suzuki SV650 up for grabs, and I've got two ways you can enter to win. If you go to yamminewmerch.com and pick up anything in the store, you'll earn additional chances chances to win. Every dollar you spend gets you an entry to win the bikes, or you can sign up for our Patreon and get automatically entered and earn chances to win based on episodes I release every week. Click the links below to learn more about which way makes sense for you and get started. We just gave away our KTM RC390 and these bikes will go soon as well. Now, Let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is safety. A comment I get a lot from guys who have never been out on track is, well, if you're going that fast, isn't it dangerous? Aren't you worried you're going to crash your bike? And the answer to that question is, yes, of course it's dangerous. Riding a motorcycle will always carry inherent risk. But when you compare the track to the street, it is substantially safer than running a fast pace on the road. There's ample runoff space at the track. The road surface is designed for grip. It's maintained so there's no potholes, nothing coming at you, everyone is moving in the same direction and has the same agenda. I'll tell you this, out of all the days I've done, I think I've seen maybe seven or eight crashes and none of them had injuries associated with them, and that's thousands of people at tons of different tracks in different countries too. It is exceedingly rare to have a life-altering issue at a track day. Now, racing is a whole separate topic, but for the amateur track day enthusiast, it's very rare. And that's because you're not out there racing, setting lap times, you're running a fun pace and you're learning. That's the point. Okay, moving on. Now let's discuss the bare minimum you will need to attend a track day, e.g. what is the absolute minimum level of commitment you need to make. If you're balling on a budget, which hey, no shame, I've been there, the absolute minimalist way to attend a track day is to get synced up with an organization that will rent a race suit to you and simply show up wearing your gear and have a valid form of ID. It sounds simple, but it's true. Near Nearly any kind of motorcycle except for dedicated off-road vehicles can have fun at a racetrack. Don't believe me? I've seen guys come out with adventure bikes, cruisers, supermotos, and anything, really. If you've ever heard the phrase, run what you brung, this is what they're talking about. Ride Smart here in Texas has a program where your first track day, your suit rental is free. This is actually what I did for my very first track day about three years ago. I got a group of friends and we trailered some bikes down to Motorsport Ranch in Houston, and all I brought was some masking tape, my bike, and some underlayers. That reminds me. Bring some masking tape. While most modern bikes, if they're properly inspected and ready for road duty, are generally worthy of being on track, they will need to have their headlights, mirrors, and brake lights taped up. Why? A few reasons. In days past when headlights and mirrors are made of glass, in the event of a crash you wouldn't want glass all over the track. Another reason is that on track you're going in one direction with no stops. There's no surprises on track, at least there shouldn't be. So mirrors are really not necessary. You should never be looking behind you while you're doing a track day because you need to be focused on your line and where you're going. The brake lights are also covered up because again, there's no surprises. You should know where the braking zones are, when to brake, and etc. Seeing brake lights will cause you to get distracted and we want to avoid that when we're on track. 
So your bare bones setup should be register for the event, check their rules and regulations since each of them are different, ride your bike in, and bring some tape. That ought to get you ready to go for your very first day. Your total investment will be around $300 all in for gas, registration, etc. If you're considering riding into your track day, you'll need to be very cognizant of fuel. Not every track has on-site gas for sale at consumer levels, so if possible, either bring some extra gas with you or plan how you will refuel because even if you arrive on a full tank of gas, you'll definitely hit empty by session three or four depending on how much throttle you're given it. An important thing to think about, and I know that everyone has a different situation so I don't want to only recommend the super cheap option, you could also do an instructional day at a track and use a rental bike instead. While this option is more expensive, it presents far less risk in terms of getting your own bike smashed up and you can learn too. Something like the California Superbike School is an awesome way to get introduced to performance riding, but there are also other organizations that do classroom sessions along with your normal track days. Ride Smart does this, for example. These instructional classes can range from $750 a day, assuming you live nearby, all the way to several thousand if you're doing multiple days and flying in, staying at a hotel, etc. So let's say you've done your first track day and you've caught the bug. You now understand why people get addicted, you're starting to see less interest in street riding, and you want to do some more track days. Awesome. Now we can start thinking about what's going to be the most ideal setup for you. The first thing you're going to want to think about as well is your rental suit versus actually getting a suit. I really, really recommend you get your own suit because rental suits, although they are great for your first, maybe your second track day, uh, eventually they will get a little disgusting. You'll probably find that you want your own suit. Uh, there's lots of options on suits. Uh, that's probably going to be a little bit more detail than I can jump into on this video, but definitely do some research. Uh, I think picking up a used suit can be a great option, but you can typically get a full one-piece suit for under a thousand dollars in most places. You don't have to spend, you know, fifteen, two thousand dollars on a suit. So at your track day, you probably noticed quite a few different setups. The most common is usually a truck, a trailer, a tent with some tools and a cooler full of water and other things and a chair. This is what I call the standard track day bro equipment and here's why. When you start getting more serious about doing days at the track, you won't want to ride your bike into the facility like you did for your first one. Why? Well. As you get better, you'll want to start optimizing tire pressure, maybe you'll want to bring a chair so you can actually sit down between sessions, track riding is hard work, let me tell you. Maybe you'll want to do a cooler so you can have some drinks too, it's impossible to bring all of that stuff if you only ride your motorcycle in. Not only that, as you get better and better, you might have a dedicated motorcycle that will take you on the track that you might not have street legal. Also. If the track is more than 100 miles away, you're not gonna wanna ride in 100 miles, do your track day, and then ride back 100 miles. Trailering in your motorcycle to the facility brings tons of advantages. Also, I really recommend trailering as opposed to loading up a bike on a pickup. It's not that it's impossible to load a bike on the back of a pickup. Plenty of guys do this. I actually used to do this with the F-150 I used to have in my second Daytona, but the problem is that it's just way more difficult than rolling it up onto a trailer because of the height. Most most trucks nowadays are huge and their bed heights can be really intimidating with a regular ramp. If you're loading by yourself, I highly, highly recommend using a trailer and not trying to load into the back of a pickup truck. Please be safe, use caution, use your brain. If you want to load into the back, load into the back, just know how to do it. As far as trailer options go, there's loads of light duty, simple trailers you can pick up. I really recommend scouring Craigslist because I've seen barely used trailers going for half off on that site. The best part about trailering, specifically motorcycle trailering, is that because the gross weight is usually about under a thousand pounds, literally any car can tow a bike and a trailer. And although I could get into the conspiracy of why modern day American auto manuals don't rate cars for towing things, Europeans will tow with small compact economy cars all day. If you're just trying to tow a bike, you can tow it with whatever car you probably have. Hell, I've seen a Goldwing trailering a dirt bike, so anything is possible. A more fancy option is to get yourself a van and load your bikes up that way. Since vans aren't enclosed, they'll provide you more peace of mind if you're going somewhere far and need to spend the night somewhere. Either way, a trailer or a van will give you the ability to take your motorcycle to whatever track you want in comfort and style. 
An even fancier option is what's known as a toy hauler. These are guys who trailer in a massive enclosed trailer that's kitted out with shelves, TVs, space for several bikes, and more. This is the creme de la creme of mobile track day solutions in my opinion. You can keep extra wheels and tires for different sessions, you can have multiple bikes, etc. Unlike the trailer, since you're adding a lot of weight, this is one where you will probably need something tow worthy to hitch it to. A Honda Civic is definitely not suitable for towing a fully enclosed trailer with three different motorcycles inside. Another point I want to make is that when you see these guys out on track with dedicated track bikes, track fairings, slicks, tire warmers, generators, etc. All these things are sort of cherries on top. You don't actually need slicks, tire warmers, and all that stuff to have a really fun time on your motorcycle. In fact, many of those guys would be sad to learn that they're just as fast on a stock bike as they are on a fully kitted out race bike that they have. It's a big reason why my track bike, the 675R, is largely stock. It's because even though I'm an intermediate rider who can run a pretty decent pace, the stock bike is still way better than my skill set, so don't be intimidated by all the gear and fancy add-ons that some guys have. I've passed many kitted out leader bikes on stock 600s and I've gotten passed by girls on Ninja 300s, so rider skill matters a lot more than all the gear. The final option I'd like to mention, it's the one that I have because it works for me and my budget, is having a garage at the track. I firmly believe this is the best option, otherwise why would I do it? Because you get to keep your motorcycle at the facility you will be doing track days at since you're typically a member there. You'll get consistent track time, you'll keep all the supporting stuff right there waiting for you. All you have to do is show up with your suit, jump on, have fun, go home. There are some downsides to this setup, however, you can't visit different tracks as easily unless you have a trailer and a tow vehicle, then you can just go and pick it up from there and go have fun at the other track. I don't yet. It can be pretty expensive to do this as well, and not everyone has the means to do so, but if you can, I highly, highly recommend just having a garage at the facility. So guys, I think that's going to wrap up this video on how to get started with track days. Hopefully it was a good primer and introduction to it. Feel free to drop some comments and ask questions about the track if you'd like. I know a good amount, but I am not an expert myself. And feel free to subscribe if you got something of value out of this video. I do appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.